Hello, everybody, and welcome to this month's Arrows NetApp Quick Hits. Last month, we brought you a ton of good information on the FAS 8300 and AFF A400 solution, as well as the FAS 8700 uh, that was released by NetApp in the end of last year. We talked about the new products available in the mid-range, how they're bridging the gap between mid-range and enterprise, the new software offerings, and the new service offerings. Today, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, how to configure these solutions in QuoteEdge. My name is Ryan Raskop, Technical Solutions Engineer here at Arrow, and I'll be your host today. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to QuoteEdge, uh, which I'm already in, and we're gonna start at the main product page. Um, this is where you would land when you go into a quote and start to build the configuration. I always like to pop into product catalog, let that load here for a second, and it's going to give me all of the NetApp solutions in a nice overview. Um, for the FAS 8300 and AFF A400, the category that we're going to focus on here is this box right in the middle um, for FAS and AFF, and we're going to do a C dot new or add on. So I'll go ahead and click that. All right. So it's asking us what we'd like to do. In this case, I'm not going to add to an existing cluster or configure a two node cluster without storage with a trade-in. Um, we're just gonna jump right in to configure a new cluster so I can show you what the FAS 8300 and AFF A400 are all about. Go ahead and continue there. All right, uh, this is running very fast today, which is nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and select the family of the system. And in this case, we're gonna start with the FAS 8300. Um, the FAS 8300, FAS 8700, and AFF A400 are all very similar in the configuration standpoint. Um, there is a few differences that I'll touch on once I pop into the all flash FAS uh, A400, but for now we'll pop into the 8300 and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so we'll select 8300 and add a new HA pair. Give this a second to load. All right, and we are in the main configuration summary page. So the first thing that you'll notice about uh, the FAS 8300 is that uh, you have a few options from the get-go, right? The system options, the flash cache will default to one terabyte. You do have an option to upgrade that. Um, that is an, uh, an option that we do see requested quite often. Um, and then with these new models, there are two forms of base connectivity. Consider them onboard UTA2 uh, type of ports. You get Ethernet, which is four 25 gig E ports per controller, um, or you get fiber channel, which is four 16 gigabit fiber channel uh, ports per controller. Um, in this case, I'm gonna leave it at the ethernet ports, which give you four 25 gig E ports. Um, just a quick note on that. If you do want to use 10 gig E host connectivity, um, you can do so, but you will wanna make sure to not include the included SFPs here um, and configure them on the outside of the configuration and finding the part on hardware universe for reference. Uh, from a storage standpoint, this is basically the way that you've seen it in all other NetApp configuration tools. Um, it does default with two DS212Cs with four terabyte drives. If you want to change that, you can feel free. I always suggest backing out the uh, existing defaulted config from the right to the left. Um, just kind of helps things uh, move along nicely. Um, and we'll go ahead and change this to a DS224C. And we'll select, uh, let's see, 24 1.8 10K drives. And our quantity, uh, I'm gonna go with two here. And you'll see uh, once I select this, the stacks will be automatically configured, um, sometimes called stacks, sometimes called loops, um, but basically the, the way that it's going to connect to the controller and how many shelves are going to be in that, uh, in that loop. So we'll go ahead and select two here. and that'll default me to two. Now that's not a requirement. Um, it is just the best practice from the tool. We only got two shelves here, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this in one stack, which will save us on SAS cables. Um, and note about SAS cables. The SAS cables default here to two meter uh, copper SAS cables. That is my default when I don't, uh, I don't know what the customer is going to need or um, not advised on what they're going to need. Um, it's a good starting point. You do also have the option to change the length here up to five meters. Um, and then you also do have the option if it is a fiber environment 
uh, an optical environment to change this as well. I'll go ahead and leave this as optical for now. Uh, your traditional cabinets and power section, right? Uh, in this case, uh, let's say I didn't get any information that they needed in that app cabinet. I'd go ahead and select other cabinet for that four post super rail kit, um, universal rail kit. It'll allow you to basically install this into any rack. And then my other default here is in cabinet power cords. Um, these are going to be the in cabinet power cords that uh, that NetApp shelves and controllers connect in cabinet PDUs. Um, the non cabinet power cords are also an option. Um, in the US, we'd select North American power cords um, and they allow you to connect to a wall outlet or a, a direct AC power source. Where the FAS 8300 starts to get interesting is in the NICs and adapters. Now, out of the gate, um, you are going to have four 10 gig EQ SFP adapter cards selected. This is not a requirement, um, it is optional, but if you need them, you can leave those selected. So I zeroed them out just to kind of show you what you have to work with here when you're building this configuration. So the FAS 8300, you'll have 10 PCIe slots available five on, uh, on controller A, five on controller B, right? So this will allow you to do things such as add SAS host adapters if you need additional stacks within your FAS 8300 um, for storage expansion, if you wanted to add some 100 gig E ports for networking, 25 gig E ports. Um, there also even is 10 base T ports, um, which will allow you to do RJ45 connections on the network. And then of course you have additional target mode adapters here um, that allow you to do 32 gigabit fiber channel. Um, so in that case, you would go ahead and select whichever method that you want. Is it initiator, initiator, target initiator, or target, target? I tend to default to target, target, um, but just please know that this can be changed uh, via CLI in the field. So we'll go ahead and select the target, target posts. Select our cable types. And that portion of the target mode is is, uh, is finished. Now I noticed that I did not catch that uh, that I configured cables here up on the 100 gig E ports. It will alert you that you have something that needs to be completed uh, to have a valid configuration. So we'll go ahead and change those. And in this case, these will be uh, optical MPO MPO connections. SFP plus is included. Um, now, something to keep in mind when you see that some of these configurations uh, will have a little checkbox check box here um, saying that the SFP plus is included, but just be aware some of them will also list this in the description like the 32 gig fiber channel adapter card. Um, other than that, we have the new support edge services. Partner select would be uh, what you would consider to uh, be legacy partner choice in the uh, days past with NetApp. Um, we also have the advisor, which is the best of breed between standard and premium support edge, um, which is what we would generally quote uh, in the past. And then of course we have expert, which is an expert level coverage um, that gets you some benefits with NetApp experts being able to help you um, in some other facets uh, of your NetApp install. So we're gonna go ahead and do advisor. Advisor is my best practice um, because a lot of people in the, you know, for the most part would select support edge standard or support edge premium. Um, so we're gonna go with that. It does default to next business day delivery. Um, my default is always four hour replacement. I think this is the most popular SLA. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Uh, deployment is still here. You get your basic standard and advance. Go ahead and select basic there. If you need training, it is defaulted. Um, you can go ahead and select your, com uh, your country and your units. In this case, I'm going to take it off. And then we'll return to Cluster Advisor. So from a hardware standpoint, that's really all there is to configuring at least the base FAS 8300 hardware. Now we'll pop into the software section. In the software section, you're going to see that uh, two things are defaulted. First of all is the core bundle, uh, as you see over here on the right. This is going to include all your protocols and FlexPhone. Um, it's always included with any NetApp FAS or AFF uh, array that you purchase. Now NetApp's changed things, up a little, changed things up a little bit here with the software bundles. Um, back in the day, we had 
base bundle um, and we had premium bundle. Premium bundle would include things like all the snap mirror uh, type of products that NetApp offers. NetApp has bundled these all into what they now call a data protection bundle. Um, it includes Snap Center, Snap Manager, Snap Mirror, um, Snap Restore, and Snap Mirror Synchronous. Uh, so if you are used to using Premium Bundle, you're definitely want to going to want to select that. The other thing that's defaulted is encryption. This is your NVMe uh, volume encryption, as well as the TPM and data at rest encryption. Um, these are defaulted. If you're looking for uh, security and compliance, which includes your Snap Lock and multi-tenant key management, you'd want to click that. And then hybrid cloud would be your fabric pool uh, subscription if you want to tier your cold data off to uh, off to the cloud. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck hybrid cloud because I didn't select the terabytes there and return to cluster advisor. And that is the software section, a little bit different than traditional, um, but very easy to understand once you understand what bundles, uh, what the bundles include from a, a product uh, standpoint. Um, the last thing that we got to do is make sure that we have cluster switches, whether that's a switchless cluster, which it does default to, um, or you can configure switches as well. I'm going to leave this as a switchless cluster. Um, if you do need switches, you would just change this to know uh, to connect to other NetApp HA pairs. All right. So with that, that is what the configurator of the FAS 8300 is. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and not save it to my quote but I am going to go into the AFF A400 just to show you how similar they are um, and mention a few differences uh, that there are between the two solutions. So we'll go in exactly the same way, select the AFF A400 and add a new HA pair. So what you'll notice is the base connectivity is exactly the same as the FAS8300. Like I said, basically the same configuration process um, across the board on these newly released solutions. Um, I will say that, so the AFF A400 can do NVMe, SED, NS224C shells, and it is defaulted out of the, uh, from the get-go here in the configurator. Um, if you want to add those, you can add up to two. Um, it does max out at two of these shells. However, if you want to use your traditional shells, uh, just make sure to back out right to left. Change these up here, just so you can see how to configure the uh, DS224C shelves with the AFF A400. Change that up. And now we have our traditional DS224C shelf options. So we'll go ahead and configure a couple of those. And we're good to go there. It'll auto configure our stacks. Now for the DS224C, you're going to default to copper SAS cables. Again, if you were to use NS224Cs, then you're going to get uh, copper 100 gig, e, 100 gig cables for storage connections. They do require that 100 gig connection. Um, what I did want to point out is just like before, they do automatically default the 10 gig E uh, adapter cards. Again, your choice on whether you need them or not. Um, but I wanted to point out one thing here. So when I did that on the FAS 8300, I ended up with 10 PCIe slots available, right? With the NetApp AFF A400, there's a few things to keep in mind, okay? First of all is this 100 gig E NIC um, in slot three. This is a requirement. It's an X1151A uh, card that is a requirement and, and is populated in slot three of the AFF A400. It also handles hardware offload for uh, storage efficiencies. However, because of this, slot two in the AFF A400 needs to be open unless you're doing 10 gigabit E uh, cluster interconnect due to a thermal requirement. So if you're not doing 10 gig E cluster interconnect, that slot needs to be open. So instead of having uh, what should be a, eight PCIe slots available. What it's showing me here is that I've got six because of the fact that uh, that slot needs to be open due to a thermal requirement. So we can go ahead, let's say we want to do uh, 10 gig E cluster interconnect. Let's select a couple of these. Um, otherwise you are doing 100 gig E cluster interconnect with these ports here in slot three. 
Um, you also have the same option on the fiber channel adapter. And you always want to make sure that you select your cables. And services, we'll go back to advisor here. I want to finish this up um, and just go back out to the product page just so you can see what the bill of materials looks like because there, there is a uh, nice little feature that has changed um, in the quote view. So at this point, I'm not going to mess with software. I'm not going to mess with switches. This is going to default, like I said, to data protection and encryption, and this is going to default to switch list. So we'll go ahead and save and add to my quote. And this will process out and we'll go to quote preview. I know you have a few options of viewing the quote lines um, in quote edge. You can drop these down. I personally have always found rather than dropping all these down, just going into quote preview is going to be the best way to kind of see what you've created, what you've configured and the solution that you've designed. So this is loading up real nice and, and it's going to start us out with uh, a new feature on these systems. Um, which is the NetApp simplified quote. Now the simplified quote is going to be for those uh, customers that, hey, I just wanna know what hardware is gonna cost me, software is gonna cost me, services are gonna cost me. I don't need to have all the details. And that's what you're gonna get right up front with the, uh, the new systems in the simplified quote offering, right? Now that's not saying that the, the info is going away that we're all used to and love, right? Uh, you know, I'm an engineer. I like to see all those, uh, those parts and, and how they're gonna connect together. Um, but this is a different offering that you can uh, you can provide your customers as well. So as you see here, it's going to split out hardware, uh, your NetApp adapters, and then of course your disk capacity by the uh, the net price. Uh, your software is split out on a separate line, services split out on a separate line, and then you have your total. Um, nice simple quote, easy to read. You know what's what. Um, but at the bottom of this quote, you also have the addendum, and the addendum is where I like to live. Um, it gives me all the parts, all the part numbers, uh, all my quantities, so I can make sure that after I've configured something, I can come here and check to make sure that the, that everything is there, right? So you're going to see all your parts listed out here from your X1147 cards, uh, the required X1151A cards, um, your disk, your mezzanine. This is set up for 425 gig Ethernet, um, as we selected, uh, and of course, your software bundles. NVE um, and the services as well as the PS and your net grand total. So you do have a few options to share quotes with your customers, um, whether you want to offer the simplified or the more traditional parts list. Um, but that is really cool because not everybody wants to see that information. So with that, uh, that is all the time we have for today. I hope that you found this configuration demo valuable. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to netappengineer at arrow.com. Uh, we are glad to help with any NetApp questions that you may have. So with that, thank you for watching and have a great day.